everyone, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my Face Awards Top 30 Challenge video, where we were all given the task to interpret the theme Power of Makeup into a tutorial. Contrary to popular belief, I don't have two faces, I've got three. <laughs> You know, when people ask me to sum up or describe my drag, I tend to find it a little challenging, but after really thinking about it, I've realized I'm sort of this twisted inbreed between a showgirl and a clown and an artist. In my heart, I'll always be a diva who loves glamour and rhinestones, showmanship. But aside from being this pretty face, I am also an entertainer. I love to be campy and corny. And on top of all of that, I can be conceptual and dark and innovative. And makeup is really my vehicle for expressing those three facets of my personality. So that's what power of makeup means to me. Now, since this is a competition, I'm gonna need all of your help to push me through from the top 30 down to the top 20. So from now, May 18th up till May 24th, you can get three votes per day per email address. I'll leave the voting link down in the description and in the comments, but without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. All right, so this is gonna be a long tutorial because we're doing three different elaborate looks all in one. But to start off on my main face, I'm of course putting on my wig cap and gluing down my eyebrows. A typical first step if you've seen my makeup tutorials here before. You have to set this all with powder to A, see if there's any texture still that was hard to detect before, and B, soak up any excess moisture from that glue so that we can move on to the next step, which is foundation. Stipple this and press this straight onto the brows and anywhere else that you want maximum coverage, and buff it around in circles everywhere else, including down the jaw and upper neck so that it blends into our surrounding skin. I'm going to use a variety of foundation colors to add the contours and highlights along the bridge of my nose and the edges of my face. For those edges, I like to use that same foundation brush from before because I find that with the leftover foundation still on it, it actually adds ease to blending everything together. When you're happy with the colors that you've laid down and blended, set everything with powder. I like to contour with both creams and powders. What can I say? I'm just very festive. <laughs> so I'm gonna go over the exact same parts now with a dark brown contour color, but not the same brush. You're gonna wanna switch from a foundation brush to a powder brush, which usually is gonna be fluffier and softer. Still using the exact same contour colors. This is all actually from the NYX Contour and Highlight Palette. I'm using that as an eyeshadow to softly start defining my eye socket with brown. Now since we're about to work on the eyes now, I'm setting my face with a dewy finish setting spray to make my skin look a little bit more like skin and less like powder. And this is the face that I made when I accidentally reached for brush cleaner and let that work its way into my mouth. Anyway, next we're gonna put on some eyeliner using the Epic Ink Liner or whatever works best for you. And the next up, I'm adding glitter to the space between my eyeliner and my crease shadow sandwiched right in between. This is gonna serve as a sort of background color to the rhinestones we're about to glue on top. So the idea behind this face is it's sort of my regular kind pretty makeup, but just amped up. So instead of the usual glitter eye, we've got rhinestone eyes. Instead of normal brows, we're gonna do rhinestone brows. I'm just using lash glue to adhere the rhinestones. It's a great glue, it's something that everybody has, but for larger, heavier stones, you might wanna use something like a special effects adhesive. That's what you see on my little popsicle stick here. I just added the stones on the brows sporadically, cascading outwards and upwards, so as to kind of lift the face up. I actually took apart a cheap old necklace to get these bigger stones. You know what? You gotta do what you gotta do. I decided I wanted more separation between the eye rhinestones and the brow rhinestones, so I darkened that crease color by actually putting eyeliner along that socket line and smudging it upwards with black shadow until that eyeliner fully disappeared into the shadow. Taking some white eyeliner now on a brush and I'm really exaggerating that space between the crease and the eyeliner so it just looks like the rhinestones are continuing all the way up, at least if you look at it from a distance. I'm also using that white liner in my waterline, extending that out, and I'm gonna underline it with black that I'm also gonna diffuse downwards. I feel like I look like a bird with all of these stripes and wings. Maybe you can see a pattern here. We've got black, rhinestones, black, white, black. All of the harshest edges are right up against the eye, and then the blending and diffusion is always going in a direction away from the eyes, so that when you look at my makeup, your eyes are drawn straight into mine. I put two more little stones right beneath the outer corner of my eye so that the overall shape almost kind of resembles a little butterfly or angel wing. And then I put in my contacts and from here on out, it's just finishing touches. I added some warm berry toned blush and on the lips, I wanted to go for this sultry dark red. This is a lip pencil and liquid suede. And after putting it on, I still felt it wasn't really dark enough. So I layered it with a couple of coats of the intense butter gloss in black cherry tart. Throw on some lashes and we're done. Face number one down, two more to go.
The two faces on my shoulders, they're actually masks I attached to styrofoam heads that I subsequently glued onto my costume. The masks are actually totally custom made from scratch using a mold of my face. I smeared petroleum jelly all over this to act as a release agent because we're going to be coating this in liquid latex, which is a derivative of rubber, and that's what our mask is going to be made out of. We're applying this in thin coats one at a time with a wedge sponge and using a hairdryer to speed up the drying process in between each coat. It goes on white and dries to an amber color. You'll actually see the color change happening as I'm speeding up this video. Now I did a total of probably like 10 layers. Around layer 4, it's thick enough for you to peel off without it ripping, but I went up to layer 10 because I really want it to be thick enough to retain enough shape without flopping like a souffle, because then the face looks sunken and flops, and it no longer looks like you, which defeats the whole purpose. You'll also want to make sure to extend your coverage of latex a few centimeters off of your face in every direction and onto the tinfoil. I also coated that part of the tinfoil with petroleum jelly because we want extra space to pin this mask onto the mannequin head. It'll all make sense later. I have a tutorial from last Halloween all about how I made this face cast, but if you don't have one, you can do this all on a styrofoam head. It would actually probably go easier than this because you don't need to lift the mask up and stuff it and make it fit. You can even go out and buy a Halloween mask. But this is the power of makeup. I wanted to show how makeup can look so different on three clones of me, not me and two styrofoam heads. So even though we are creating a zombie over here and it would be so much easier to just cut out the nose, poke holes in the skin, I wanted to limit myself to just makeup. So once you have enough layers, again, I used 10-ish, I didn't actually count. We're gonna cover this in just makeup. So first things first, use a setting powder to dry this off and get rid of that shiny finish. And I'm gonna be using some water-activated body paints to do the paint job. Only because I find they're faster than using cream paints. And I'm painting the teeth of the zombie first, and then the eyes, which I tried to add a little bit of dripping as if they were just like melting them away. I used this green body paint to cover the entire skin around what I had just painted. Don't worry about going right up to the edges, it can kind of be in broad strokes. And then I used some black to outline all of the teeth. I also used that black to paint a little zombie nose, which it's sort of like an upside down heart shape with two little notches on top. Now I wanted some gaps in the mouth so I wiped the teeth away there and drew in my gums, bottom and top with pink body paint. And I'll also use this color to draw some holes of like flesh all around my face. Now if this all looks a little familiar to you, I was loosely inspired by a design I did last Halloween of a green pop art zombie. This one's just going to be a little bit less glam and more art and surrealism. Now that we're pretty much done with the painting, I'm going to set those aside and use some eyeshadows now to add some shading and dimension. I used blue to shade in a crease above the eye that I kind of concentrated more on the inner part of the lid to give that droopy sad face because our zombie is not all too happy to be melting away. And I took more of that blue just as a face powder all around the face to mask the eyes and make the skin look less flat and one dimensional. Next, I'm taking black eyeshadow on an angled brush and everywhere there's black outlining pink flush, I'm gonna smudge that black inwards towards the pink so that it looks like there's a shadow being cast by the pink being a couple layers beneath the green. It makes it all look way more 3D. I took more black paint and extended some of those holes into droopy little lines, sort of to hit that reference to surrealism and just make me look a little sadder. And finally, I took a toothbrush and flicked some yellow and black all around my face to just make it more distressed. And that's it for the zombie face. Since we added petroleum jelly, this should lift off pretty easily. Just make sure to get all of those edges. Once it's all off, I'm stuffing some of the inside with cotton balls and latex. The reason why is because we want to put this over top of a styrofoam head, which is smaller than my man face, so we need to stuff the inside of this to make up for that gap, or else, like I said, it'll look droopy. It should just be sufficient to stuff the lining like around the perimeter and the nose, and I'm gonna fully let that dry overnight. Now let's move on to the clown face. Off camera, I repeated the same exact steps of coating the face cast so we can jump straight into the paint. Firstly, I covered this with a mixture of white face paint and the palest shade of the Total Control Drop Foundation. We want our clown to be white like a clown, but also still look a little bit human. So after putting down our base, we're going to powder that and move on to the eyes. I started off with a blue shadow again, and like the zombie face, I want to give our clown a little bit of a sad, droopy eye by concentrating that color into the inner upper corner of the eye, so it angles the eye downwards almost. Here I'm using my Epic Ink Liner again, and I'm going to draw out an eye. Now I'm terrible at drawing with a pencil and paper if I have to do it freehand, let alone drawing like a realistic looking eye. I don't know how people do it, but the way I managed was I started off kind of pretending as if I was doing eyeliner on somebody else's eye, doing that lower liner, and connecting it with an upper liner and I smudged this into the blue with some black shadow. 
And then I took some white paint and whitened that inner eyeball in case any blue blood into that area because this is going to be the whites of her eye. And then I took my liquid liner and I drew a big pupil right in the center as if I was wearing circle lenses. And then taking some more white face paint, I cut myself a little crease and this is really where it started to come together. Finally, I'm taking NYX's white matte liquid liner and I'm drawing a white line right above that lower black line. This is the white that's always in my waterline. It just makes it look a lot more like makeup on a real face. And the reason I switched over to this particular product is because it's a little bit stronger coverage, which we're gonna need in order to cover up the black. I also took some pink eyeshadow and added that like flush tone to the corners of my eyes. I may have gone a little bit overboard, let's be honest, in the realism of all of this. It was kind of unnecessary and hard to see from far away. But the final touch is just gonna be a little reflection in the pupil and then repeat the same process on the other eye. Next up, adding some bright blush with the primal colors in both pink and red. I added some of that to the eyeshadow. Just for fun, I felt it needed more color than just blue. To paint the red nose and red lips, I used um, a red liquid suede lipstick with a lip brush to paint in those features. Oh, and don't forget to add some dark shadows to the nostrils so they look like real nostrils and not like they're covered up. Using that epic ink liner again, I'm drawing some clown brows and that little line through one eye that sometimes clowns have. And finally, to finish this off, we're going to give her some big drag lashes. Again, I'm peeling this off slowly and I'm stuffing the nose and edges of the mask with more cotton and latex. Now you should have two masks that are nice and stuffed and ready to go on our styrofoam heads. These are what I used to display my wigs. I had to sacrifice two of these by cutting down the neck so that just the head is popping out. I stitched up this jacket from scratch to glue these heads onto. Do not ask for a sewing tutorial. I had no clue what I was doing <laughs> with this jacket. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna pin the masks into the heads with little sewing needles. This is why I advise you to make them bigger and give yourself extra room because the skin that we're gonna pull back and pin in is gonna be hidden underneath the wig. Once it's pinned all the way around, I used a mixture of like hot glue, E6000, and a bunch of safety pins to attach these to my collar. And I just added the wig last by hiding more sewing pins into the hair. It's tough because styrofoam is so crumbly and weak, you can't sew into it, you, you, can, you can glue it, but it still breaks apart if there's too much pressure moving around. I actually found it easier to safety pin the costume to the latex, which actually had more strength than the styrofoam, but that's the rough idea of what I was doing. The focus here is on the makeup, okay? <laughs> Anyway, that is how I created my three-headed circus ring master. This is the finished look, everyone. I hope you liked it as much as I did. I put so much work into this. I think I worked on this every day for the past two weeks. But my work here is now done, so it's all up to public vote to see if I move on to the next round. So if you like what you see, you want to see what else I have up my sleeve and what else I can come up with, be sure to visit the voting link in the description and vote three times per day per email address. You can get your friends to vote, your followers to vote, your grinder hookup to vote. All that matters is that they have an email address and they think I'm fierce enough. Thanks again for all of your support. It really means so much to me and I'll see you guys all soon. Mwah. Bye everyone.